Are you using TB Fab to remove the cancer of sin from your life? I'm Pastor Brian Holmes with Empowered Christian Ministries with another lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program. That's what we're going to dive into today. Christians need to diligently pursue sanctification, which is the process of God changing us, making us good and holy from the inside out. Now, doing good or being good won't help save you. Salvation is the gift of God by His grace alone because we trust in Jesus, as Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 9 says. Sanctification is about who we become after being saved. This lesson covers, one, why you need to change, two, how sin is like a cancer, and three, how to use TB Fab to manage your progress. One, why you need to change. It's not enough we just stop committing the big sins and try to do better. God desires us to become like Jesus. 1 John 3 verses 2 through 6 says, Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. The process of sanctification isn't supposed to feel natural. It isn't natural. The old sinful you is supposed to be dead, remember? It died with Christ. Romans 6.6 6 says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body, ruled by sin, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So it isn't going to feel normal. It isn't. Your normal habits and routine way of thinking and feeling and behaving is going to feel at odds with this new way, the way of the Holy Spirit. But he must be in charge now. We must learn to submit to him. Galatians 5 verse 16 says, Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Since this new and it requires change, it will not feel comfortable or certain. It will feel difficult and uncertain and maybe even stressful or painful sometimes. But we must do it anyway. We must change. We must continue to become the new creation. Two, how sin is like a cancer. In my book, The Empowered Christian Roadmap, I wrote, Sin is not a disease that needs to be managed. It's a cancer that needs to be removed. To pursue righteousness, we need to change the way we see sin. It's not enough to just stop choosing to act on sin by not committing a sinful behavior as though we're still supposed to be full of the sinful thoughts and desires. We just don't act on them. No. Sin is like a cancer. It will keep growing, keep getting bigger, and trying to replicate itself and spread itself all throughout the rest of our system. We do not want to treat it like a disease we're supposed to manage. Visiting God then weekly like a doctor to unburden our guilt and confess our sins, to ask for forgiveness and get our sin treatment to heal the sin damage that was caused during the previous week. No, we need to get to the root and destroy it. We need to recognize it 
for the wickedness that it is. Understand how it contributes towards our separation between us and God and towards suffering and towards bondage and ultimately towards death. We need to then go to where the sinful desire starts and then come into agreement with the Lord that we don't want any part of it and ask the Lord to destroy it at its root. In the book, I share a little of my story about how the Lord took me through a process to overcome anger, as well as pornography, lust, and other sins. But you need to make the commitment today to destroy every trace of your sin, too. 3. How to use TB Fab to manage your progress. So how do you change and where do you start? I developed an acronym that I think will help. TBFAB. T-B-F-A-B. Think leads to believe, leads to feel, leads to act, leads to be. Who we are is what we repeatedly do. And what we do begins with our thoughts. Our thoughts initiate and drive the rest of the chain via a cause and effect. So if we don't believe in the thought or embrace it, it usually won't drive our emotions. We're also usually uh, emotionally engaged before we act. For example, you won't feel depression unless you first think about depressing things and then believe on them to be true or worth focusing on. You won't be an angry person if you don't first feel angry and then act angry. You won't act on lust if you don't first allow yourself to think it's okay to think about lustful things that produce lust and then believe that it's okay to continue to do so and then let those thoughts stir up your feelings of lust and so on. Remember, you can stop up the process at any point in the chain. You could think of a lustful thought and then instead of believing it and allowing it to take root and to entertain it in your mind, Cast it away immediately instead. Choose to think about something else and then allow that to move forward through the chain. Think about something else, something good and pure, something you believe is true and good, something you want to feel and to act on and to become. Let the Holy Spirit guide and empower you in this process. Train yourself to become disciplined in it, and you will eventually gain mastery over it. Now your energy won't be used up in a daily rigorous struggle with your sin disease and can be used to glorify God and advance His kingdom instead. Examine the fruit of your life and heart. If you're being something you shouldn't or acting in a way you shouldn't. Examine the front of the chain. Closely examine what sinful or false beliefs, feelings, and thoughts are at the root cause of it. Confront it right there with the truth of the gospel and shine the light there. Jesus purchased for us abundant life with his blood. In gratitude, let us honor him, not only with what we do, but with everything that we are. Romans 12 verse 1 says, In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Therefore, Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, 
perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, reveal to my heart and mind whatever thoughts, beliefs, or behaviors I do that I need to change. Help me to listen to and surrender to your spirit and become like Jesus. Amen.